A few years after the end of World War I, Congress passed a law saying that veterans of that war were entitled to a bonus for their service. In 1924, Congress said American veterans of the First World War had earned a bonus of $1,000. But here's the catch. It could not be paid for about 20 more years. They couldn't collect it until 1945, or, uh, or their families could collect it upon their death if that came before 1945. Well, along the way, the country fell into the Great Depression. Americans were starving to death. They were on bread lines. And the veterans who knew that $1,000 was owed to them by the government decide that they would much rather collect that now, please. That money was owed to them. They had earned it, and they needed it to feed their families now. So in the spring of 1932, in the middle of the Great Depression, the veterans marched into Washington because they wanted payment of that bonus they had earned in World War I. They were called the Bonus Army. The Bonus Army set up as an encampment in Washington, D.C., tens of thousands of people in a living political protest. History tells us that they kept their instant city clean. They integrated their camp racially, which was really quite radical at the time. We know that they grew gardens for food. They settled in for as long as it might take to make their point to Congress and to then-President Herbert Hoover. At least that's what the Bonus Army hoped. The head of the U.S. Army, General Douglas MacArthur, looked out at the peaceful protest of those veterans camping out and saw an embarrassment for his commander-in-chief. MacArthur mustered troops on horseback against the veterans' camp and followed those horses with tanks. The destruction began. Then troops began to set fire to their wooden shacks. One reporter wrote... The blaze was so big, it lit the whole sky. A nightmare come to life. The president looked out a window of the White House in the direction of the fire, then retired for the night. And the roaring flames sound the death knell to the fantastic bonus army that ends so disastrously in the shadow of the capital of the United States of America. Two U.S. veterans were killed that day, uh, but the movement grew. What does not kill you makes you stronger, they say. News of the raid, the first footage of what had happened, reached Americans in movie houses on newsreels that they used to show in theaters before the main feature. As Frank Rich describes in New York Magazine this week, when Americans saw those newsreels of MacArthur's army destroying the veterans' protest camp, Americans applauded the Bonus Army. They cheered for the Bonus Army. They booed General MacArthur. Yesterday, these images began to reach Americans. It's the police in Oakland, California, breaking up the Occupy Wall Street protest there, Occupy Oakland. Part of the Occupy Wall Street movement is uh, for economic justice. This one in California, the police moved in with batons swinging. They tore down tents and smashed signs. They sent tear gas grenades into the crowd. The cops are also alleged to have fired rubber bullets, something they are denying, despite injuries to protesters that look like they were caused by rubber bullets. The police admit to firing beanbag rounds, though. Frankly, when you look at the footage of this, it rather looked and sounded like a small war. Washington, D.C., 1932, the raid on the Bonus Army. Oakland, California, 2011, the raid on Occupy Oakland, Occupy Wall Street. Two American scenes separated by almost a century. But put the old one in color, throw on some plaid shirts, and you almost could not tell them apart. In his story this week in New York Magazine, Frank Rich tells the story of the Bonus Army and of Occupy Wall Street. He titles it, quote, The Class War Has Begun. 